Okay, guys, I'm hoping and praying, I've been praying that this 1962 Chevy uh, Impala two-door sports coupe will start. I haven't started it probably since, I don't know, uh, maybe like October, November of 2021, and it's now April 2022. So let's see, I've connected the battery and I checked the fluids. Everything seems to be okay. So let's see how it does. Battery's connected. Good. So that's good. Doesn't sound that powerful, but might have to put a charger on it. It might not start. I don't know. No, it seems okay. What about that? It has been, what, six months at least, I guess? You know, you kind of bump it over, but uh, I have, we always have bad weather and I don't get it out in the winter, so, but it's a comfortable spring day today and thought I'd get it out. I'm gonna let it warm up here for just a minute. This is a really good car. My longtime subscribers have seen this car a bunch. That's a, a with me, whatever's sitting in the garage here turns into a catch-all. Meaning whatever, you know, it's it's I don't have heat in this garage, so I mean whatever's you know we don't need in the house. We kind of like set it on top of the car or whatever, so it took me a while to clean it up where I could actually get it out. I'm going to let it run for a few minutes, and I hope you'll stay tuned and watch it. I'm going to try to sneak this thing out of here without making a bunch of exhaust in the garage here where the, where the carbon monoxide detector goes off. Sneak it out here real quick. Oh, am I glad of that? It started. Let me adjust my rear view mirror here. Oh boy, this is great. Rev it up just a little bit. It's still cold. Gonna let it run here a little bit, it'll be good for it. Boy, I'm glad that thing started. I was expecting, I've, ne I've never had much trouble out of this car whatsoever, but I thought it'd be a little bit harder to start. But man, this is a this is really a, a jam up car. I really do like it. It's been a good car. Check everything out. I forgot to look. kind of show you around the car first I'll just tell you a little secret every time we go to the store <laughs> we're buying toilet paper and paper towels don't ask me why but we do <laughs> anyway see what I mean about a catch-all this trunk is perfect there's nothing wrong with the trunk it's just turned into a catch-all. I shouldn't have showed you that, but oh well, y'all are my friends. Uh, this 62 Impala is a one family owned car. I know I've told y'all this before, but I've had so many new subscribers and I thank God for that. It's a one family owned car. Uh, 
my uncle bought this new in 1962 and uh, he's a he was an insurance salesman when he was alive he's been dead for years and years but uh this car is for North Alabama up around Abbottville Boaz area uh, Gunnersville if you're, if you're familiar with that area Rev it up a little bit more. Anyway, I'll tell you the story real quick how I got the car. As I said, my uncle bought this new in 1962 and he sold uh, Life of Georgia Insurance. Uh, that was the name of the insurance company, Life of Georgia. I don't know if they're still around or not. But uh, I was at my grandmother's house. They lived out on a farm. And uh, I was over there. I was five years old and I was playing in the sand. Sand, sand mountain means sand mountain. It's real sandy soil. And so I had my little cars and trucks playing in the sand, making roads and this, that, and the other. And I was... I seen this car coming from way far in the distance and uh, it was this car here and uh, I quit playing in the sand with my cars and stood up and looked at because I thought man that's a pretty car and uh, come to find it out it turned into my grandmother's driveway here in the farm and uh, I looked and seen who was driving it and it was my uncle Arnold. And uh, I run up to him and I said, Uncle Arnold, is this your car? And he said, yes. And uh, he was filling out insurance papers on the, on the steering wheel there, writing stuff down. And uh, I said, Uncle Arnold, this is the prettiest car I've ever seen in my life. I said, would you save this car for me when you get tired of it? And I did not know this, but my grandmother had come outside and uh, I didn't even hear the screen door slam. And... Uh, she heard me say that. So when my Uncle Arnold, like I said, he, he drove Tennessee, Alabama, Georgia, it, all over the Southeast selling life of Georgia insurance. So this car has a, has a gazillion miles on it. And uh, my grandmother heard me say that. And so when it was war slap out, it was time for my Uncle Arnold to get another car. He had to have something reliable like I said, because he sold insurance. So my grandmother bought it. And uh, I, did, I didn't know she was buying it for me, but she did. And uh, when I got, she held on to it. My, my grandparents were, my grandparents were poor, very poor when it comes to money, but with, but they were rich, wet, filthy. No, I'm sorry, not filthy. They were very wealthy with other things. They had food, always had food on the table, you know, always had a garden growing in it, you know, had a little farm, but they did not have indoor plumbing, you know, like, I mean, you had a, they had an outhouse, they had a mule, they had some chickens, and, uh, you know, I, I remember them having a hog, and my grandfather and grandmother worked on the farm, you know, they'd go out in the garden every day planting or picking or something all the time and I'd go out there and help them when I when I was around them pick beans you know break beans whatever but uh she held on to this car my grandmother was the only one that would drive a car my grandfather would not he would drive a mule you know plowing and stuff but he wouldn't drive a car and uh Anyway, I'm trying to make this story short. I'm condensing it as much as I can. Uh, it uh, seemed like that my grand my grandmother held on to this car. She drove it, the wheels off of it because it's the only car they had. But they never did get out in the snow or nothing with it. So this is all the original panels and stuff on the car. Uh, I got about 1983 or 84 she called me and asked me 
she had a 73 Impala by then, and believe it or not, it was my, my Uncle Arnold's 73 Impala. And so she was kind of moving up, you know, 10, 10, 12 years for a 73 Impala. Well, no, see, it would have been, yeah, she had the 73 Impala. I mean, he drove it for years. Excuse me. Sorry about that. Pollen gets to me. It's springtime here in East Tennessee. Anyway, my my grandmother wound up with the 73 Impala, and she she still held on to this car for several years and kept it in a little shed. People were always stopping in, trying to buy this car, and she wouldn't sell it. Well, she called me one day and uh, asked me if I wanted to buy it, if I still wanted the car, and I said yes. And I said, how much do you want for it? And, and uh, she said, just come down here and just get it. And I said, I can't do that. I said, I will pay you for the car, but I said, I can't just come down here and get it because like I said my grandparents were really poor with I mean they didn't have any money at, at, at all you know so they they traded chickens you know they, they they done a lot of trading around you know for different things sometimes for money you know sell a few chickens and stuff but I mean they they done the best they could with what they had you know and uh, they always kept everything really neat. There was no garbage or trash laying around. I mean, it was, it was a, I'm so proud of them. Anyway, my grandmother and grandfather, my grandmother called me and told me to come get the car. I'm sorry I get sidetracked. I get a little bit emotional talking about this car. Anyway, I, so I gathered up all my tools. I got off work one Friday after working all week, you know, and got my tools, and uh, I, I, was, I was married to my second wife, believe it or not, by then, and uh, we drove to Alabama from here from East Tennessee, and uh, I went down there and, and uh, you know, started playing around with the car, checking fluids, this, that, and the other, and I kept asking her, I said, please, well, how much do you want for the car? I said, I can't just take a car. And she and she said, she said I've been saving this. Golly, it's it's hard to talk about. Please forgive me. Man, it's tough. Sorry about that. I get emotional, like I said. I, I apologize, truly, I do. But my, she said I've been saving this car for you, son. And. uh because I remember you said that when you was five years old. So, uh, I said, I called her Granny. I said, Granny, I said, please let me pay you something for the car. Anyway, she finally met, I finally got her to take a dollar, a dollar. And of course, I mean, the car didn't look like this, like it does now. It, it was, it, I, I've had a paint job on this car. It's back to the original colors, white with blue insert. Uh, but, uh, oh, it, let me tell the story first. Anyway, I wound up with the car. It's got a 283 in it with the power glide. It's pretty much all original, except it's been lowered and got the wheels. I've, I've got dual exhaust on it where it had single exhaust. I put the grill guard on it and uh, I, I bought some new things for it. I got the new mirrors on both sides, the correct ones for a 62. And uh, of course, you know me, I like chrome tips. I got the bumper guards on the back and I, I you know, I bought new emblems. Any, Anyway, I've had, I've put money into this car and I had to be, I had to be careful with this car, putting money into it because I knew I could never sell it. You know, so I've had lots of, I've had lots of trucks and cars before that I'd play with and I, I would, I could put money into them when I had it, you know, but with this one, I had to be selective because if I put money into it, I knew I wasn't never gonna be able to sell it. I've had a lot of times in my life where I've had to sell things because of bills and this, that, and the other, you know. 
So, I mean, you know, things happen. Divorces happen. Like I said, I just mentioned my first. I see, I've been. I was on my second wife then. I finally got one now, Mrs. P.I.B. That's a keeper. I, we've been married for getting real close to 30 years. I think 28 years. Anyway, you have to buy. You have to find someone that's going to be faithful. Anyway, uh, sorry, I got off topic. Anyway, I got this car, and I've been putting a little bit here and there into the car. I've I've replaced the, I traded around. I know I've told y'all this before. This thing's supposed to have blue seats with, you know, blue insert, you know, for a 62. But I traded around and got this white with the white door panels. And to me, it looks great. I, I can't afford the kits for these cars are so expensive. Just, just look them up. I mean, you're talking thousands of dollars. And I never have been able to, you know, get far enough ahead in order to. I can't believe I've done this much, to be honest with you. Anyway, got new carpet. I still have the original steering wheel, but I love 59 Impala steering wheel. So that's what I got in it. And uh, I put the 61 glove box door on it. I still have the original glove box, the blue. But I just like a 61 better because it gives it a little... To me, a little dash extra of chrome, aluminum, whatever you want to call it. But uh, uh, Tim Dixon last year at Gas X Chop Shop, check him out. He's on Facebook. Gas X Chop Shop, 10 Mile, Tennessee. He done a bunch of work on this car for me, and uh, I, I believe it's in pretty good shape. I mean, you know, it's other than it, it needs to be cleaned up again from sitting in the garage. I keep it in the garage with a car cover on it but still it, you know it, it, it gets dirty but uh this old car means so much to me don't pay no attention to these primer spots I had my friend I was just getting into patina style for some reason you know how when you're younger you get some goofy ideas well there you go there's one there's no rust in the car I, I told my friend, I said, just make it look like we're working on it or whatever. I did Dumb. Stupid dumb. Me, I mean. The only rust that's ever been in the car is uh, the heater core. If you have a 61, maybe 59 through 64, whatever, sometimes a heater core will leak. And you, it'll leak down in the floorboard and you won't know it. My grandfather sat right here, wherever they went. And I don't guess he noticed it was damp. So I had uh, Tim uh, Dixon fixed a little spot there. Hadn't it wasn't real bad, just a real small spot. He fixed it, welded it in. Got my new carpet and stuff and a package tray. Had my headliner put in by a really good friend of mine, and he told me that this would be the last headliner that he put would ever put in. It's really tough, but I mean, there's no. There's no slack. There's no nothing. I mean, it's just perfect. I've I got the Kleenex dispenser. I, I just done little things. Tim and Corey put the gauges in there for me. This car came with idiot lights, and I don't. I just don't trust the idiot lights, so I had them put that in. I'll show you this car, the motor, real quick. Trying not to bore you to death. Hang on just for a minute. Okay, uh, it's 283. I put power brakes on it. Uh, of course, it, it came with power steering. I uh, got rid of the generator and put an alternator on it. Uh, it. It's all good. As far as I know, I mean, there's, there's not too much wrong with the car, except it needs to be drove. And I apologize for that. I don't drive nothing too much. I, I don't know. I've, I guess I've turned into a homebody, but uh, it, some of y'all might be saying, well, "Why don't you put the blue seat covers and stuff on?" Like I said, check out all that stuff. This stuff is expensive. If you if you say Chevy Impala, especially old ones, you better have a a pretty good sized bank account. And I never have been one to have bunches of money. Checking my gauges here. 
make sure everything's good. Anyway, this is this is the original uh, aluminum. I call I call everything chrome, but that's the original aluminum for the car. I mean, the car hasn't been abused. It's it's just got a zillion miles on it from from being drove by everybody. I remember sitting in the back seat of this car, uh, going fishing, stuff like that. I mean, we just threw everything in and we'd go to a big old pond or something somewhere and just fish and go get ice cream now and again in it when I was visiting my grandparents but it's just a really good old car I sorry I got kind of a little bit of emotional on it but it's just it's just really special to me because my uh, grandparents were because my grandparents thought so much of me to save me the car and uh, I'm 65 now and they've been gone for many many years and uh I'm just really blessed to have had some grandparents that that thought enough of me to to keep the car for me because I've all I've always played with cars and trucks as a kid and uh, little toys and stuff you know ever since I was born I've had a car little car truck in my hand Anyway, I won't keep you any longer. I realize the video is very long. I'm, I apologize. And uh, uh, the name of this car, by the way, I don't think I told you, but the name of it is Whitey because my grandmother had a pet chicken that she would get eggs from every every day, and its name was Whitey, obviously, because it was white. And in honor, I, I just, I don't know why, but I thought the world of that chicken, too. So I just named the car because my grandmother would go, would go out there and check on it and gather eggs and the chicken was so tame, I just named the car Waddy too. So anyway, this is the car, it's Waddy. And I, I appreciate y'all watching the video. I didn't mean to make it so long, but uh, you know, I, I just try to explain how I got this car and how fortunate I am to have had it and had such wonderful grandparents that were that were poor as dirt. I mean, golly, I, look, it's funny when you're a kid, you don't realize, you don't realize that you're poor. I mean, that your grandparents are poor or anything, you know. I, I, I mean, they just always, I didn't mind going out in the yard and taking a leak, or I didn't mind going to the outhouse, you know, or, or whatever, or just, you know, grab you a kitchen chair out and sit around in the yard in your in the kitchen chair and when it's time to go to bed you put your chick uh kitchen chair back up to the table you know breaking beans shucking corn you know whatever and i mean you don't think nothing about it i don't think anybody nowadays would not too many i wouldn't think would even know what in the world i'm talking about but uh anyway i, I appreciate y'all watching this video and um, you know like i said every i don't know why I keep telling myself every time I make a video on this car that I, w I won't get all shook up. Golly, every time I, I start reminiscing about it, about this car and my grandparents, I get a little bit, uh, I get a little bit teary-eyed. So I'm trying not to show it in the video and I, I'm sorry if I messed up the video. Y'all have y'all have a blessed day. Uh, you're watching Primer is Best. If you'd like to subscribe, I sure would appreciate it. I'm on a, I'm on Instagram Primer is Best and Facebook Primer is Best, and I have a second YouTube channel. If you'd like to check it out, that I periodically put videos on. It's called Man on a Budget, and I'm on Instagram Man on a Budget One. So I'll try to put more videos up there as soon as I can. But uh. I, I thank you so much for watching the video. It sure does, sure does mean a lot to me. And let me know what you think about old Whitey here. It's, I tried to make the story short, y'all, but I know the video's too long, so I apologize. Y'all have a blessed day. The Lord's in charge, and I got to tell you, He's been good to me because throughout my life, I've had to turn around and sell things. You know, I've always been one of those type people, you know, pay your bills. And I've always kept my bills paid, even if it meant selling something. But with this one right here, 
you know, like I said, I was real, I, I can't believe I still have it. It's been, had some tough times in my life like everybody else. So, I mean, I, I, it's still here with me and I'm, I'm just blessed to have it. I don't know, you know, I'm, I'm just grateful to have it. The Lord's blessed me. Y'all have a good day. God bless y'all. Like I said, and I appreciate y'all listening to me ramble on by no car. But this one sure is special to me. God bless y'all. I'll catch you in the next video. See you later.